Hello and welcome to yet another talkative video and today I will uh, try to cover a more complicated topic. I want to talk about our spatial or three-dimensional hearing and uh, I want to discuss uh, how we uh, evaluate staging and uh, actually when in the process of this explanation I will try to uh, debunk one of the myths. If you seen a uh, few different reviews for some in-ear monitors, you probably can uh, notice uh, that uh, different reviewers give different evaluation for the staging parameter and for the three-dimensional, for the imaging, for all that uh, 3D sound related things. How can it be so? Of course, you know that we hear differently, but uh, for some things like uh, for example, are headphones natural or basic or bright? Uh, usually there is a consensus and uh, uh, most of reviewers usually agree on this aspect. But uh, when we talk about the stage, there are noticeable difference. And uh, why it's happening this way, let's uh, try to understand now. So how do we... Uh, understand the difference in the direction of the sound. If we take a head, so it's it's look from above, like two ears here. Well, I am not the best painter anyway. And we will we have some source of sound, let's say here. So sound is a waves and actually we can consider it as flat waves. They are not absolutely flat, but actually we can uh, we can uh, simplify things a little bit here. And you can probably see what's going on here. Actually sound waves already reach our right ear, but uh, still far from the left ear. So there is a slight delay between the sound between the getting sound to the right ear and to the left ear. If this delay is small, we can actually calculate it. Uh, I won't do the math now, but speed of sound is 330 meters per second in the air. And regular head is, I don't know, distance between ears like 20 centimeter or 0.2 meter so you can easily calculate this difference and it, it appears that our brain is really good in uh, measuring such a small difference it will be i don't know a few milliseconds uh, so but uh, besides the delay if it, if it uh, would be just a delay it would be too simple there are a few different aspects first one is actually decaying sound decays uh, in the air and uh, higher frequency sound is uh, especially fast decaying the higher the frequency the uh, higher is the speed of uh, decay and for the high frequency sounds especially above uh, two three kilohertz actually what we hear with right ear is much louder let's say its loudness it's much louder than what we hear by left ear. And our brain also measures this difference in the loudness. Third aspect is uh, the difference in phase. So when sound goes, it's kind of some sine wave. And when it gets to the left ear, it will be some phase theta, for example. And for the until it get to actually sorry when it get to the right ear it will be theta i don't know well i need to use some simple letters anyway so phase will be theta and uh, when it get to the left ear it will be additional phase difference delta it's also better uh, achieve better percept uh, by uh, our brain for the high frequencies and uh, actually there is a common rule 
we uh, we better distinguish in di distant uh, position for the higher frequency sources. For the low frequency sources, it's getting more complicated. Still doable, of course, but uh, more complicated. And that's actually why usually used only one subwoofer in uh, 2.1 systems and uh, other 3D sound systems. And also there is yet another aspect. Uh, actually, we our head shadowing sound. It also works be better for the high frequency sound because uh, if you remember, uh, it uh, there is a correspondence between frequency and uh, uh, length of the wave for the uh, if I remember right for the 10 hertz length of the wave will be 330 meters so I need to take a break and take a mass actually yes for 100 hertz it's 3.3 meter for the 1 kilohertz it's 33 centimeter and for the 10 kilohertz it's about 3.3 centimeter and uh, if you remember from your physics at school when uh, the wavelength is higher than the size of the obstacle the wave just bypass the obstacle so sound below one kilohertz will just go around our head without any uh, uh, without uh, facing any obstacles and for the sound above one kilohertz uh, approximately our head will shadow this uh, part of sound and we will uh, get the more difference in the in the volume levels so that's why we better distinguish the uh, location of complex sound signals when it, it's not some uh, sine wave or monotone signal when it's some musical signal for example and when it consists, uh, when it's getting gets uh, something above one kilohertz, so we better in locating the sound signals. So, three different, uh, three different deltas. It's difference in uh, time, in time, in amplitude or loudness and in phase so it all works good in the with a normal regular sound source but of course everything is much more complicated in the reality because there is uh, sound reflections from the walls from different obstacles and also there is a sound reflection from our, our outer ears and actually this reflection is what allows us to distinguish is sound located in front of us and above uh, or behind of so when sound is located strictly between the ears we don't have the difference we don't have any of this difference and it's hard to distinguish is it in front of us or behind of us and actually in these cases we often just uh, slightly move our head to get the better idea where our sound is located and that allows us to analyze the difference of this interference from out our outer ear and actually recent studies show that even uh, reflection from shoulders uh, took part in this uh, uh, determination of this direction by our brain and uh, we do it instinctively and we even pay no attention at, at that for example cats are more lucky here they have their uh, rotating ears so they can easily distinguish the sound direction we are not so lucky but anyway but uh, the worst case is uh, distinguishing the and also, by the way, this reflection allows us to uh, distinguish the difference when signal is lower or higher. But the worst uh, actually case is uh, distinguishing the distance. Is sound closer to us or somewhere more distant? In this case, the only difference we've got is uh, the loudness. And 
that uh, the case when our brain goes fully empirical. For example, we usually uh, underestimate the distance to the noise signal and overestimate the distance to some musical signal. So everything is pretty complicated here. But it gets even more complicated when it comes to the sound. Actually, the vast majority of music is recorded and mastered for the speakers, so everything is pretty simple with speakers, so here is our listener head. Okay, no, I need to practice drawing circles. We've got two speakers and they play some music. For the right and for the left ear we are getting this time and amplitude and phase difference and also usually during the recordings uh, audio engineers adding reverberation to mimic the echo and gives us the sense of the room where it was recorded and our brain is more or less okay with building this three-dimensional perfectly positioned stage but when we use in-ear monitors or headphones we don't have the difference in time amplitude and phase only the one that was added by during the recording and usually it's uh, it's uh, this signal is processed for the speakers and they don't adding this delays uh, necessary for proper mimicking the three-dimensional positioning in the headphones but luckily or unluckily our brain is a really complicated computer and when it got the faulty data as an input it starts to fill the gaps and uh, it starts correcting these mistakes and actually it's tricking us so that's what the main idea of this video actually stage in the earphones and headphones is almost uh, always is a matter of psychoacoustics and it's a matter of our brain tricking us so the, of course there uh, there are some factors that impact our stage perception but they are subjective and they change from person to person for example i usually uh, consider brighter earphones as sounding more spacious and getting wider stage and uh, darker sounding headphones and earphones are more intimate for me so uh, that's why we are getting such a different results in description of the stage in three-dimensional imaging there is one uh, exception of course it's the binaural recordings and it's a great idea and I really hope that in future we will have more such recordings, not only experimental ones, but uh, actually it's uh, done in a pretty simple way. So just some uh, decoy head that mimics our uh, real, uh, real human head, and uh, it has this decoy head has real ears. And uh, often, we, if, if this decoy is expensive, uh, there is even special material mimicking our ear channels. And inside of that ear channels located two microphones. So these two microphones recording sound the way as it, we percept it. With all uh, interference, with all delays, with all difference. So basically binaural uh, recordings gives us all the necessary data and that's why they sounding so spacious. If you never did try some binaural records, there are some examples on YouTube, but I recommend you the Dr. Chesky compilation. Uh, this uh, label released few binaural recordings and it's a really interesting experience to try it with the uh, uh, earphones or headphones but uh, of course vast majority of records are not binaural and that's why the stage is totally imaginary and uh, actually it's probably the more honest and better way to call it imaginary stage there are a few solutions that tries to mimic this uh, time and amplitude and phase distortion uh, there are some software implementation of this crossfeed uh, 
this process is called called crossfeed because this crossfeed filters just adding a bit of signal from the left ear to the right and vice versa. There are simple versions, there are more complicated models, but usually they fail. And uh, actually they fail uh, because only the most complicated uh, use the phase difference and uh, do it in a proper way that corresponds to the recent uh, scientific findings in this area. One of the best implementation is in the S-Audio Focus uh, digital tonal converter with headphone amplifier I reviewed recently, but also there is <laughs> some problems with this uh, implementation because uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a really unusual feeling. You, you rotate your head and actually the sound follows your head. It's not the way it happens in real life, because in real life when we move our head slightly two sides, sound should change. So probably in some future, in ideal situation, we will have more complicated system. We will have some headphones with motion sensors that will detect the head movement. And we will have the complex binaural processor that will provide this uh, cross-feeding. Actually, we've got these two components separated. There, are, there is a good crossfeed implementation in the S Audio Focus, for example. And we've got uh, head tracking headphones, for example, Odyssey Mobius. But uh, S Audio Focus lacks uh, movement tracking and Mobius lacks uh, crossfeed technology. So maybe in some near future, some company will join and unify these two processes. And uh, actually that's why we can get more or less uh, good stage when we talk about the weeds. And depth with earphones or headphones is totally imaginary because we don't have this reflection from the uh, outer ear. We don't have, have get the proper reflection. So the distance uh, is totally based on our brain tricking us. And of course, moreover, we even less likely we will have some height, so we can't distinguish the high or lower signal in headphones. There are some uh, uh, psychoacoustic tricks, but it's just a tricks, and that no, they are not applicable to music in general. So I suppose this video was at least a bit useful and at least a bit understandable. I uh, I am waiting for some good future implementations with good digital signal processor and motion sensors. But meanwhile, we can rely on our brain tricking us. I really encourage you to make some experiments to get uh, good uh, high-level earphones, some high-level player, and uh, try to do some equalization to find out what uh, parts of sound spectrum uh, impact impacts your hearing. It's really unusual. It's a bit complicated and time exhausting, but anyway, it's really good and really interesting uh, thing to do. So I will probably cover some additional experiments in future, different different blind tests and so on. So we will see how this. Uh, this part of videos on my channel will develop. So if you have some questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.